Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters, following the immortal trailblazers into the wilderness of early Western America. Among these pathfinders, none has a more secure place in history than John Charles Fremont, scientist, soldier, and explorer. In 1841, Fremont, then a junior lieutenant in the Army, married Jessie Benton, a senator's daughter. (laughs) Isn't it glorious? What's glorious? The weather, the spring flowers, or you, my love? (laughs) Neither, you silly goose. I mean, I've been married, of course. Darling, I have something to tell you. It's not distressing, I hope, John, dear. It depends on how you look at it. You're a soldier's bride, remember, so keep that pretty chin up. I'll be brave. Tell me. The Secretary of War has issued orders that I'm to explore the western country between the Missouri River and the Rocky Mountains. But you've only just returned from one expedition. I'll speak to Father. He's a senator, you know. It'll do you no good. The purpose of this expedition is more than exploration. It has an international aspect. International? Yes. I'm to aid the emigrant movement to Oregon, and in so doing, circumvent probable British control of that territory. When Fremont returned to Washington from his first Western exploration, he was immediately ordered to return to the Rockies to make a more thorough and a more scientific survey of the interior wilderness and to coordinate his maps with those of the Pacific Slope. May 29, 1843. Some of Fremont's company of adventurers are examining a squat brass cylinder in one of the mule carts in the little town of Kansas on the Missouri frontier. Fitzpatrick, you're a mountain man who's seen everything, but did you ever see the like of this? Well, I'll sworn, Talbot. What is it? Uh, I ain't got no idea. I never saw anything like it before. Here comes Maxwell. Uh, Let's see if he knows what it is. Maxwell, what do you see in this cart here? The loaders must have made a mistake. That don't belong to us. Give me a hand, boys, and we'll heave it out. Yeah. All together now, boys. One. Two. Oh. Hey, hey, oh. What, what, what you boys doing? Oh, this brass thing, Bruce, don't belong to us. We're heaving it out. Le- leave it in the cart. That's a cannon, a 12-pounder. Oh. Herr Freeman is taking it along to use against the Red Savages if they molest us. Well, look, men, under the sacks. Powder. Well. And shot. Enough to start a war. Well, then let's fire a parting salute. To the Missouri settlements and a successful journey westward under a gallant soldier, a great engineer, and a gentleman born. A few months later, at a small Mexican settlement on the Arkansas River. When we get to St. Brains, Fitzpatrick, the party will divide. You go direct to Fort Hall while I'll take the longer route to Green River. Yes, sir. Look, Captain, coming up the hill. Yeah, I've been watching him. Probably a curious Mexican. Oh, that's no Mexican. That's our new guide into the Rockies. Gentlemen, a cannon salute to the greatest frontiersman of us all, Kit Carson. <laughs> With the famous Kit Carson as his personal guide, 
Fremont and his men plodded 300 miles through a region never before trod by white feet. Salt Lake was Fremont's immediate objective, which he was the first to explore. One day in a collapsible boat. Helvin, are not these waters sublime after being so long shut in by those mountain walls? Yes, sir. But I'd rather be exploring the shores with Kit Carson instead of riding around on this wobbly craft. Bruce, what do you think of all this blue liquid beauty? I see no beauty. Only black storm clouds and sure disaster unless we get ashore quick. <laughs> That's a scientist in you, Bruce. No poetry, no soul, only cold logic. There's no poetry in a heavy storm, Herr Freeman, in the middle of this inland sea in a leaky boat. Uh, I don't like those clouds either, Commander, and we're several miles from shore. Oh. Yes, the storm. Quick, Herr Freeman. Back to land. Uh, easy now. No panic. Every man take an oar. Yes, sir. Bruce, yes. you bail. Yes, sir. I'll set the stroke. Ready? One, two. Yeah. One, two. Oh. One, two. Oh. One, two. Don't upset the craft, Bruce. Bail! Bail! He comes in faster than I can be. Getting darker, too, every minute. Uh, you help Bruce, Dallas. Yes, sir. Now faster now with a stroke. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. We'll never two. make it here, Prima. One, the varnish over my ankles already. That's nonsense, Bruce. We'll be very close to shore now. You better. I smell land. Land, yes. And here we are. Oh. Oh. Still feel poetic, Herr Freeman? <laughs> yes, Bruce. Bless your logical German heart. Just listen to the heavenly poetry in that thunder and those falling raindrops. When the expedition reached the Columbia River, Fremont left his men, half-starved, to personally request supplies from the Hudson Bay Company's trading post at Fort Vancouver. In Dr. John McLaughlin, the factor... Fremont meets a kindred spirit. Welcome to Fort Vancouver, Fremont. I'm delighted to see you again, Doctor. Ah, but it's good to get out of the wilderness, even for a few days. I agree with you. Can I be of any help? I need supplies, food, for three months. Then you shall have them. Never in the honorable history of the Hudson Bay Company has it refused food or shelter to any man. <laughs> Shortly after midnight, November 25th, 1843, Sierra Nevada. The stars are brilliant and the weather bitterly cold. Men, we have two objectives, a mysterious Mary's Lake and an unknown stream called the Buenaventura River, which is supposed to flow from Salt Lake to San Francisco Bay. To discover these places will be a difficult task and may cost us our lives. Anyone wish to remain here until spring? No, no, no. Very well. It's almost one o'clock, so forward. December 16th, after a difficult and heartbreaking passage over the mountains, Fremont stood on top of the sheer eastern wall of the Sierra Nevadas, looking out over the vast floor of the Great Basin, many hundred feet below. Kid Carson, did you ever see anything more beautiful? Captain Fremont, Bruce was right. Right? What do you mean, Kid? Captain, you may be a soldier by profession, an engineer by training, and an explorer by order of the Secretary of War. But Captain Fremont, you're a poet at heart. Nonsense. And then who could see anything pretty in that sandy, wind-blown devil's dance hall down there below with a poet like yourself? <laughs> Frostbitten, their eyeballs seared by the snow-reflected rays of the brilliant cold winter sun, the Fremont party labored mightily, facing death at every turn as it made its slow descent to the level of the basin. Christmas Day, 1843. Uh, oh, I'm all tuckered up, Captain. Then get into one of the carts, Talbot. Oh, no, no. Mules got all they can do now. Oh, Bruce. Bruce. Y yes, yes, here, here. We'll make a halt soon. Ah, yes, my hair. To celebrate Christmas, yes. And to sing songs. Yeah, you can sing if you're strong enough. But when we stop, we'll throw out that cannon so Talbot can ride. No, 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 Captain Fremont. I, I'm all right now. Just a blister in my foot. Uh, 
We'll sing you a bit, but, but let's keep the can. Let's keep the can. New Year's Day was even more gloomy than Christmas. All hope of discovering Mary's Lake and the Buenaventura River gone, Fremont's only course was to continue down the east side of the Sierra Nevadas, keeping close to the base of the mountains. Half-starved, nearly naked, foot-sore and weary, but unshaken in its faith in its great leader, the party reached an Indian village at Pyramid Lake, where the men dropped in their tracks, exhausted. Look here, Fremont! A savage comes! I see him, Bruce. Help me to my feet, Fitzpatrick. It's a chief. And redskin chiefs require a dignified reception. Welcome, oh my white brother. Thank you, red dweller along the water. My white brother look weak. They need food. Yes, oh red chief. Our fare has been meager. The trail has been long and wearisome. My braves are in their canoe on the lake. Soon they bring fish. Fish. I could eat a trout raw, head, tails, fin, and skin. Our great white father's blessing on you, my red brother, and on your braves who bring us sorely needed food. To save the expedition from total annihilation, Fremont determined to recross the mountains and to explore California which many said should now be taken from Mexico. Up, up, up into the pathless, limitless mountains climbed the heroic party. The nights were too cold for sleep. In places, the snow was 20 feet deep. On February 13th, 1844, Fremont's pet dog was killed for food. On February 21st, the company reached the summit of the Sierra to look down on a scene of exquisite natural beauty. In the distance shimmered San Francisco Bay, there, Captain Fremont, is Mexico. Mexico? Oh, yes, I'd almost forgotten. Upper California was a Mexican province. What, what do you mean, Captain, was a Mexican province? I have a premonition, Fitzpatrick. That poet again. Every time he sees a fine view, our gallant leader becomes a poet. Gentlemen, I have a feeling that the United States of America will soon welcome into the folds of the Stars and Stripes our new territory, California. Because John Charles Fremont brought boundless enthusiasm, patriotism, vivid imagination, scientific skill and valor to his task as explorer, his place in American history is permanent and secure. Thus closes another inspiring chapter in the lives of those frontier fighters who, with their brains, their brawn, and oft times their very blood, thrust America's boundaries ever westward toward the setting sun. <laughs> 